Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to Jerry's Live. Today is JL116. We're doing Lucas Pan watercolors. We're talking about that you kind of really don't have an excuse not to do art kind of anytime, anywhere. Depends on what you're carrying. We can go from little to really big, nice big sets. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, an experience I recently had where I basically did take art with me everywhere. So, uh, so the episode is JL116. So if you want to see any of the products that we're showing here today, you're going to go to our website. It's www.jerrysartorama.com. In that search box at the top of the page, you're going to type in JL116, JL116, hit enter. It's going to pull that list up of all the stuff that we're showing. And we're going from literally like a $20, $25 like package set all the way up to a full set of 70 colors that are still very portable for watercolor. So, um, so let's get going because I want to show you guys the things that I used while I was out in the field. And then we're going to just kind of play with some of the sketches that I actually did when I was out and about. Now, if you've watched the show before, here or there, at some point we've mentioned that I show dogs. I have been showing and breeding. What? Not what everybody. We got some new people. We got new people. I've been showing and breeding Great Danes since, I guess, uh, 2001 was when we got into purebred sport with Danes and then we added pointers because we thought, hey, let's downsize, we're getting old. And then, and then no, we still have great Danes. So, so anyway, we, and pointers. we have pointers and Danes and uh, I go to dog shows maybe once a month or so um, to compete with the dogs. Yeah, and by the way, we're gonna have some thunder, hopefully no power outages, but we've got some big storms going through. So I know, knock on some wood somewhere. Um, but anyway, so I'm always talking about, or I guess really preaching, hey, you can do art anywhere. Hey, you can do art anywhere. Well, I put my money where my mouth was, took sketchbooks, took some watercolor, and actually took them to the show. So when I was not in the ring showing my dogs, I was able to do a little bit of work watching some other breeds and then drawing. So, and I'll give you guys some tips on, this is like urban sketching, but I guess at a dog show, which is kind of still urban sketching. It's just a strange version of it. But I can give you some tips on if you want to sketch uh, from animals, from life, things that you can do to make them look more like, uh, I guess, especially with specific dog breeds, like those specific dog breeds. Okay, so let's go through these items real quick first. So um, I use the Accurate pens. They're waterproof, which because I was going to be doing watercolor over them, that was very important. Uh, I mean, th this is very inexpensive. It's a little under $11 for a box of 12. So that's 12 disposable pens that you can take anywhere. If you lose one somewhere, it's not that big of a deal because you got 11 more. Uh, then I tried the Reflections Aqua sketchbooks. Now, we changed the sketchbooks up and made them smaller, and they're more kind of like a little leatherette bound sketchbook, but these are really nice. This one is discontinued only because of that, because we've kind of streamlined them to make them look fancier. These are fantastic and they're on closeout. Awesome closeout prizes, prices. Yeah, I talked to Deidre and we've got plenty of them. So this is a way to get watercolor quality paper. Um, it's 84 pound paper and there's 40 sheets in each of the sketchbooks and they've got the hard bound, this is mine that I've been hauling around, hard bound, you know, so it's perfect for holding it open. It's nice and hard. It's got fabric on it. You could customize it. It's very strong rings to it and it's perforated so that you don't have to like pull the paper out if you want to keep it for a finished sketch and then have to carefully cut off if the pages are actually perforated. So they're really fantastic, but the prices are awesome on them. Right now they are $5.99 for a 5x7 and $9.49 for an 8x10. So those are really, and that's the paper at the perforated size, not from edge to edge with the wire included. So these were really handy to take along with me. Um, then we've got Faber-Castell has this great little cup called a click and go or a pop cup. This is the cup that comes in this. Super easy. Oh, 
It's got these great little ridges. I take a rubber band and just clip it onto the sketchbook. Uh, with this, the, there's a rubber band already on it. So it holds it and it doesn't go anywhere when you're not, you know, working on it. So that is a fantastic thing and they're around five bucks for something that's really easy to carry and flatten out, but that will hold a fair amount of water. Uh, then we've got these little whoop, handy dandy aqua brushes. Set of three, they are the Aqua Stroke Go water brush pens. It's all three sizes of tips. Something new. We're going to show it in September with our new products. But it's got the water in it. You just squeeze it out and you can produce color. So you don't even have to carry brushes extra with you or worry about purchasing a set that's got a brush in it because you would have this with you. So if you, like you're going hiking or something like that, backpacking, where you don't want to have to carry water bottles for your cup, you already have water in these. Um, this set that I just love is the Mimic Kalinsky set of four travel brushes. They're small enough where you can just stick one in your pocket. You don't have to carry the whole set, but it's nice to have the full set. Pops right open. It's a synthetic Kalinsky, so you're not harming any animals, but it performs like Kalinsky and they're really fantastic. So that is the Mimic Kalinsky travel set. Um, and those are on sale right now for $73.99, so that's a good deal. Then, very quickly, we'll show you the, um, the watercolors that we're going to show today. We're showing the Lucas brand because it's a brand that not as many people know as much about because that's our proprietary brand, but it's a really fantastic value. We've got the student grade sets which it's not so much student grade, like, you know, praying or something like that. It's just an inexpensive small set. Um, this is perfect. Remember these when we read, when we did our little uh, watercolor pans, Katie, a cut last year. Mm -hmm. Look at, they've revamped the box. Made a little color chart for it. Oh, and it stuck to it. Close it too soon. I did close it too soon. It just stuck to the paper. I didn't uh, seal it. But look how cute this little set of 12 is now. It's got a little brush in it. Oh, cute. I haven't seen it since they've redone it. It's, it's brand new. And guess what? $16.19. Nice. So even if you use all these or don't want the Lucas ones, that box is a great value just for that. And you can make your own pans or have pans you out. have pans you already have. Yep. Nice. They, put, they stuck to that. Yeah. So. So yeah, so in that fits in a pocket. Cute. It's tiny, but 12 colors. So I was very excited when I, I saw the, plastic. it's plastic. Nice. So, but super durable. It looks durable, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, as durable as that other one, I actually like it a little bit better, it's smoother. Then they have a set of 16, which this one's been used. It comes with a pencil actually, and a brush. Got your primary colors there, your magenta, cyan, lemon and then other colors. So it gives you kind of the mixing colors up front where it's easier to remember instead of kind of interspersed through the set. These are very inexpensive as well. This is $30.39 for that with the tin. Then we've got the, the Aquarel 1862, which is their professional line. Um, if you've never tried it, basically it's gonna be, don't you think, as compatible with Winsor Newton watercolors as, as you can get. Yeah. So if you're used to using Winsor Newton, this is going to be the value of, you know, a different brand, but with the same performance. So this set's been used around the studio, but it's been used that much because I really like it. This is their set of 24. Yes. That's probably our most used. Oh, I think so. Set in the studio. It gets washed off and then I come back and I'm like, yeah. Oh, somebody else has used it. Yeah. So, and they've, I, I know this was a set when we took pictures for photography like three or four years ago. Yeah. And it's been floating around ever since. So it's, it's a great set. Yes, it's a great set. As with any other tin pan set, you can pop colors out, put new colors in. Um, and they do sell just the boxes if you're just looking for, you know, pans that you already have. A box that goes in it that's as nice as this. So there is that. So you're talking, you're going from $16.19 up to... This is $107.19, but it's 24 colors of professional watercolor that's portable. 
then I told Amanda we were going to make her day. This box is just beautiful. The color alone is just, I just don't even want to open okay. it. I just want to look at it. But we're going to have to, Amanda. And I'm one of those people that's really bad about opening presents don't and ruining them. I know. So I was like, I don't want to damage the box. So this is a set of 24. All right. They've got the little thing where you can lift it and put it into the 48. tin. 48. I'm sorry. Yes. So just the bigger tin, right? That's right in there. And you go from there. So going from 12 to 48 goes from 107 and some change to 215 and some change. But you're doubling your colors, right? Okay, so you just doubled colors. But then I noticed in looking on the site, you could go from 48 to 70. 70 colors, Amanda. 70. With a wood box. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Uh, and it's that half pans. Portable. Okay. No, it's this is still portable. If you took, I, with a 12 by 16 uh, watercolor block, it's no bigger than that. And look, this is the cool thing that I noticed today when I was unwrapping all these one by one. <laughs> a, this is what I recommend. When you unwrap them, don't just throw the wrapper away. Write the color name on the side of your pan mm -hmm. with a permanent marker, with a Sharpie or something like that. And keep that little piece that comes off it that's got the color. So you've got that. So you can make your own color um, color chart. I started making them and realized that I was not going to have enough time to do them. So do that so then you know you can do your color chart and write on them. I'll show you one that I've done with uh, some Maybe pans at home. Can you do a color chart? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could you I'll do that? i the other half. Okay. But then, okay, so this is 70 colors. Notice there's an empty, empty slot here and here. And then and there's a couple over here. You can put 12, 24, 25, 26 more pans in here. 26 more pans in this set of 70. There's room. So if you maybe have some other pans or say you love these colors, you're, you're wanting to buy a complete watercolor set, then you could go with something like Daniel Smith, like we like that we've done with our stipends before the girls and I have, where we'll buy a tube and we'll make three pans with a big tube of iridescence and interference colors and all that to have like some bling, some pretty bling in there. Sorry, the rain's probably gonna get kind of noisy. Um, Okay, so if you go up from 48 to 70, this is only going up $11 and some change. $11 and some change between that 48 set and a 70 set with wood, with the ceramic palette, with two brushes and all that. So it's, so pretty. it's very pretty. So that's amazing. And look, 12 by 16 block, this has brush, other than a water cup, this has everything you need in this, okay? This is portable. This can go in a purse or a laptop bag or something like that, right, Amanda? I see you carrying stuff like this all the time. Yeah. And I see you getting in and out of your car and going places. This that is still would portable. That perfect in a beach bag. Yes, it would. Okay, so, but compared to this, And then you could take this little thing if you didn't want to use the little brush in it. Look at that. Way more portable. That fits in. I always carry a little over the shoulder bag. This all fits in there. So, crazy good stuff. You don't have excuses anymore for not carrying your stuff with you. So, so I took all this stuff going to a five day dog show. And between ring times with the two breeds, I sat around and did a little bit of sketching and did a little bit of some watercolor um, and just kind of watched the world go by. And it was very entertaining and fun. And I think that my friends that are our pointer breeders thought I was a little nuts because I was running around with watercolors and sketchbooks. But let's look at a couple of those and just talk about kind of if you're out in the field, what you can do. And then we're going to actually take these and I. I think we could break in the set of the of the 70. What do you think? Okay. I think that sounds like a right. plan. Yes. Okay. So, so number one, if you remember our marker episode with Jeff, 
that came and and Jimmy I took the markers and tried it I got the gray set and took it along with me tried it with this little um, whip it here it was holding very still I think it felt like I was it was being stared at but just tried it with that pen because it's waterproof did the marker over I just did not have the white wash with me to go from there but it does work if you saw that marker episode and you could do that in lieu of carrying watercolors with you so that was fantastic just on the gray paper like he had recommended so we got that then I took another sketchbook that was one I'd not used that I wanted to give a try I wasn't as happy with the paper but we got a Frenchie and another little Frenchie that was running around the ring I was trying to get the kind of look and shape of that and then this little one that was sitting there waiting to go in that was very kind of woeful I don't know if he wasn't real happy about that but oh sorry you're gonna flip flip down yeah that would work better maybe there we, there go. we go oh huh? I can turn it like that no, it's oh, okay, I got it. okay all right I don't know if you may want to storm is happening right now we're messing yeah it's stuff. yeah it's screwing <laughs> it up I don't know if you want to zoom in a little more on the yeah. those as this I just show them so so Frenchie and all right there we go little Frenchie running come in different colors a little Frenchie sitting there giving me the eyeball so then uh, I decided to try I, I really don't like I like carrying small sketchbooks I don't like using them because I don't like working so small but I ended up liking this so we've got another pointer this is not one of my pointers this is the pointer that was winning breed and going to group every day so I got a nice profile of her sitting waiting before they went into group and tried some watercolor with it. Works really nicely. A little Cocker Spaniel there that was baiting in the group ring. Just a couple quick lines and you get the impression of the shape. Whip it. Whip it good. Sorry. That's not a cool dog show joke, but for some reason we entertain ourselves every time we go and say it. Another little Frenchie here just with very quick basic lines. Uh, this is a little terrier. I wanted to get, this was very quick, but I actually took a photo and went back and sketched that because I really liked that one. Airedale, Poodle, Pug. You can see that I didn't catch up with the watercolors. Um, this is a Havanese and then a Dane. So, um, and then I've got a larger pointer, the same pointer that's on the move that I just got the sketch to, but I didn't get to the watercolor portion of that. So, um, do we want to show how this watercolor works on some of these? Yeah. I think that would be... We all want you to Poodle. Huh? The poodle? Poodle. Poodle, poodle, poodle. Okay. That would actually be a good one because it's it's very dark and it's going to be kind of hard to see otherwise until we add the color. So let's do that. Hey, yes. So we can still hear you over the range. Just make sure you keep your voice way loud. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're doing it's, great. It's like white, yeah. It's like white noise. It's, yeah. Okay. Nothing so right. we'll do this with this little set. Will that fit in there? Okay. Yeah. As it gets suddenly quiet. Seriously? It's so funny. So funny. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's going to go to boom, I'm sure, at some point. All right, zoom in on that and make sure all this fits in. Yep. Put the color chart. Yeah. I can flip the picture. It's okay. Actually, let's do this and put the color chart here so you can see the colors next to what we got going on. Okay. So, poodles are really fun and easy to draw because it's just like the poofy outline, but you still have to get where the legs and stuff come out from so you've got the the understructure beneath it so i see a lot of people in the jerry's live facebook group we've got a private group for jerry's live viewers that's just under jerry's live if you don't know about it or you're not part of it you can go to groups and search for us jerry's live and and make sure you answer the question and you can get approved for the group but something a lot of people don't know, especially when you're doing purebred dogs, there's still a pretty, there's a standard for the dogs, right? I'll take some Payne's Gray here. We'll darken this up in a minute, but I'm just going to get this to start 
the outline of the dog. So there's a written standard for most breeds, and some breeds even have an illustrated standard. The dogs are supposed to look a very specific, very certain way. So if you are doing a dog and you don't realize, you, you just like, I know, don't know what it is, something looks wrong, something looks off, Google the parent breed club for whatever breed that is. And usually they have that easy to find on there. Take a glimpse over it, maybe look at the illustrated standard first or read the other standards. Sometimes they're together. You'll very quickly realize where you went wrong. You've got something too long or too short or the color is off or something like that. Um, that's really the best way to accurately portray dogs, especially if there's, I know there's a lot of people that want to do pet portraits and I know not everybody's got purebred animals and I totally understand that and there's nothing wrong with that. But if they are purebred, you know, pay attention to, you know, what the dog is supposed to look like. Okay, so see this is a pretty blue Payne's gray. So I'm just doing the dog specifically just to get some color down. And now we're gonna come back in and let's some burnt or raw umber there. You can see that I've got I had a little Payne's gray. I'm gonna pick up some of the magenta to put in with it and a little bit of that olive green just to make this a little bit, let's try a little Viridian. A little bit, see that's a little bit closer to like a red black. There we go, it's not as blue as that Payne's gray is. So we're gonna come back in and we're gonna start going into some of our darker areas as this is starting to dry. And we'll just kinda pat it in for the shadows. With this type of paper, you can see pretty clearly where it's getting dry enough where you can add to it without it kind of bleeding all over. Just by the texture, the texture shows it pretty easily, which is very nice for like a paper pulp paper. Okay. shadowed face. If, if you guys get any questions, just go ahead and zing me with them while we're going along, okay? And yes, my watercolors look a little bit messy. That's very common for, for me. I'll go back over usually when I'm done with a painting session and I'll clean them so that it kind of gets rid of that excess of the other colors. Now, if you're doing this at a show, lights are usually from above. Always kind of put your color in the paper towel and just make the shadows back in under behind the dog. It's an easy way to kind of get that look of depth, whether it's really that way or not. You're just what you're trying to do when you're doing urban, just like doing urban sketching, you're trying to get an impression, right? Of whatever it is that you're looking at, whether it's a building or a tree or a you know, dog or what have you. So you don't have to have the shadows and stuff perfect. Just you want that look of the depth to it. Like kind of overzealous on the tail here. So we're gonna move that off. Let's add a really nice dark green shadow here. Don't want it to get too wet, but I want it to blend well. Always put your shadow on if you're drawing from life, whether you see it there or not, because it helps your work from just floating in space. If you've ever noticed that when you see people, that, especially people that don't have a lot of experience with drawing things or just maybe never were formally trained, you'll find that this beautiful drawing and then the thing is floating. It just looks like it's hovering. Always put a shadow underneath just to ground that. 
Okay, can we see how that's starting to look very 3D? It's starting to look poofy, right? So I've got that paint's gray is kind of blue, and then we've got kind of a green shadow. Probably brown it out a little bit more in here. So we need a nice kind of bright background color. So I'm going to try... Let's try this orange a little bit. Just see how what the pop is for it. What colors did you use to mix that green? The green on underneath the dog? Yeah. It is the olive green and the raw umber. Uh, this one and this one. And with your outline, you don't have to put this everywhere. You can put it some places and not others. You can take it and wet it and kind of blend it out. It's entirely up to you. This is just, I like to add the background color just because it helps kind of enhance the look of the dog, not because it's necessarily warranted. Do you tend to choose complementary colors for backgrounds or you do you just pick whatever suits your fancy at the time? Uh, it depends. It depends on the color of the dog. It's more something that I would think is going to look nice with what the dog breed is because like the pointer that I showed at the beginning that had the watercolor it did have a blue background and it was an orange pointer and I did use it was earth tones I didn't use orange orange per se but it helped make it a little brighter and pop more with something like a poodle remember how we talked about with the color and composition red and black are that po the power combination right so that's why I'm, I'm picking this just to make it pop a little bit brighter and it kind of makes the the blue in the Payne's gray not look as blue it makes it look more black and you picked the green because you knew you were gonna put red right not necessarily no. I, I actually considered uh, doing the yellow because I thought that would be bright and pretty but and this is actually well it is a cad red but to me it's more of a red orange so, so see how that all of a sudden looks very three-dimensional, right? With very little bit of, of water and color added. How long did that take us? Not even five minutes, right? Was it even that? Okay. So let's take this, and while this dries, we'll, we'll come back to another one in a few minutes. Let's go up to, yes. Amanda. Uh, Mary is wondering about the pen that you used because it's waterproof. She's wondering yes. if it doesn't, if it repels the water in the no, water. No, it does not. It's not a wax uh, or oil pen. It's just, it's just a permanent pen that soaks in. So okay. you, it won't repel it. It won't give you weird lines. It's a really easy little thing. I'm going to set this up here. Let's, uh, so that was just the student grade colors too, keep in mind. And that's how nice and bright that that turned out, right? In fact, all those ones, all those ones in the beginning before that were, uh, were the student grade colors. That was the same little student grade set. See the orange and the blue, right? That was a student grade set. Now that's magenta, primary magenta and green. So it's kind of like your complementaries, but it's the thunder. And then those were just kind of just something bright and colorful. All right, so let's switch to the professionals to see if you guys can really tell the difference so much. Hey, would you do yes, that? yes, when uh, I do that, what? Skip that first page, skip that first page. Skip what? Oh, yeah. Through your book? Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, I just realized what you're talking about. Yep. Okay, so this is an orange pointer, but we're, I'm just going to use kind of the natural colors on it. We're going to... So first I'm going to put the colors that she is, but only kind of in the shadows there, right? All right. I think she's 
she's got a little bit of that on the tail there as well. Is that hail? That sounds yeah. like hail. <laughs> All right. Now the rest of her body is pretty white. There are some speckles on it, but when the dog is running past you, it's not real easy to pick that out. So let's go ahead and notice I did not put a shadow on that, but what we're going to do is I'll do it with the watercolor and we can come back after the fact. Actually, let's just do this now. All right. So I'm not going to make it so that it comes perfectly up under her. We're just going to ground this because I don't want the pads and stuff to be covered. All right, see how that kind of grounds that? Suddenly she's not floating in thin air. So we'll give that a second to dry while we're going up top. Let's do... Uh, I don't know, I was pretty impressed by the flying pointer. The flying pointer? The I, thought, I thought she was pretty talented there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you've met my pointers, and you know that they can fly. And that can they're jump six-foot brick walls. Quite, yes. Yes. Don't ever name a pointer Waldo, because you end up going, where's Waldo? Constantly. All the time. You? Yes, he's quite a uh, endearing little menace, we're just going to call him. All right. So I'm just kind of outlining the head. I'm not sure if I want this this bold. We'll see. Yeah, let's get some of this blue for under here. Ooh, that's nice. I like that color. And you can see with these pans, now typically with pans, you've got to scrub to really get those to release color. Oh, these are so buttery. Yeah, you don't have to do that with these. Now, granted, this set is is not new. Sometimes, once in a while, and with some brands, it's all the time. You do need to take kind of that kind of hardened shell off of the, the pan. But we'll, we'll see that. We'll try that with the big one in a few minutes. We'll give it a go. I didn't think to time this. We should have timed it so we could know how long it takes just to... Luckily, the judge moved this girl quite a bit. She has really pretty movement, so they wanted to see it, so she went back and forth a couple times. Which size brush are you using from the Mimic set? Right uh, now? Whichever one the largest one is. I will check. I'm sorry, it's a 12. I, I forgot that they, well, I okay. I was like, don't I have a number? <laughs> well, okay, so, but I've had these for how long? And I think I had some of the prototypes and there were not oh, numbers on them. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, I don't even know. All right, now you can see that that, I didn't let this dry quite enough. You can see, see how the tail and the neck bled into it. I actually don't mind that, so we're gonna leave it for right now. And this one does have a black, so I am gonna use that for my shadow. Just not at full strength. Wow. some of the black got in there so I just pulled that wet my brush and then pulled the excess water out and just kind of sponged it out all right do, do, do. let's take this I'm just kind of making a shadow color that's kind of neutral with green burnt sienna and a little bit of black yes Amanda um, Susan said that sometimes she has trouble with using um, a waterproof pin on like toothy watercolor paper because it's not a smooth line. Do you have any tips on keeping your line smooth or just use smoother paper? Uh, try a different brand of pen. Some, not all pens work the same and you might find a different brand takes to that a little bit easier. 
What about a brush pen? Uh, no, that's gonna, on a rough page, it's gonna bleed because brush pens typically have more ink. Um, I, I, and, and I say that in that one time I was like, hey, so that would work. And then I was like, yeah, no, that doesn't work. But yeah, I had the exact same thought, Frida. Okay. So see how we've got kind of her going here. I don't like how dark this is. So I'm going to pick a little of this up and just kind of move it around. This, <laughs> this thunder is fairly um, annoying, isn't it? All right. Any other questions? Just fire them away. Get them. All right. So this is probably enough where I can go back over it. Yep. So see, that was a light enough color where I could just kind of get rid of that. Skateboard. All right. So I'm going to start brightening up her color just to get it a little bit closer to. Now, this is where looking at the standard is helpful because if you don't know the breed, an orange pointer has the same color as a lemon pointer. But the orange pointer has black nose and black outlines around the eyes, where the lemon does not, because the lemon's a dilute color, so it has the same color nose and around the eyes, like a little Martian, like Waldo. What? I'm serious. All right, see how we're kind of tightening up the shadow a little bit here? Just going a little bit darker. I don't like to go too dark right away because you might find you don't, your other colors, you don't want to take them quite to that saturation. So it's better to kind of. It's a lot easier to add another layer than to remove oh, a layer. Oh, heck yeah. Put a little pop heads in here. nose and around her lips so that she looks more like an orange. Let's try to add my shadow on the ear. Do we have any other questions while we're moving along? I'm just adding a little bit of, it looks too flat, so I'm just adding a slight shadow along those legs so that it kind of helps round those out. I'm gonna bring it up here to the shoulder as well. That's what some of these lines are. Some of these lines are notes that I leave for myself to kind of help determine what I'm doing here. the shadow here. Okay. So with this, since I don't have, I did not snap a picture of the dog because I could either draw or I could take pictures 
So with this, I would probably leave this about where it's at just because I don't have the total accurate what the actual shadows looked like. And I just want to keep that kind of essence of the dog on the move. Maybe I add a slight bit right here. We have a couple people asking about paint, watercolor painting in general. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, do you sometimes take these smaller sketches and work them into larger sketches later on? Yes, that's a good question. And Liz was asking if you can create a watercolor painting just using the paint without actually sketching the subject first. It, me personally or if just anyone could? However <laughs> you would like to answer that. Okay, so I always do studies before I do a final artwork. If I was going to take some of these and do like a final artwork from them, I would do the studies first and I'll play with color. So I might Maybe not the same, like, the exact same drawing like this, but I might do multiple drawings of that dog and try different color schemes to see what I think is really going to look best and favor the dog. That being said, you could do it without doing the drawing first, but I don't like doing that because, to me, it's for a final one. For study, that would be different, but the problem is you have to build from light to dark, just like we've been doing. So if you take that and you're doing the drawing with the watercolor, you're probably gonna be way too tentative with adding shadows, with knowing where all your stuff is. So that's why I don't work that way. And, and, and I know a lot of people don't wanna do pen, and you don't have to do pen. You could um, just do pencil, just really light. Use an H or maybe a 2H pencil and do, your, do a very light sketch and then do your watercolor. So at least you've got kind of somewhere to go by. You don't have to do the shadows. The reason I do the shadows with the pen is because that saves a whole lot of time with me. I can just, you know, quickly do that where it just gives the essence of the dog. It gives some shadow. I just have to put a couple colors down in it and the shadow is done, right? Where if I'm just doing a quick pencil outline, that I, I can't use that. I could use the pencil for the shadow, but you'd want to erase that later, right? So it, it just kind of depends on how you're wanting to go about doing it. What, okay, so I've got an Airedale, I've got a pug and a, another thing in the Dane. What, what do we want to do? We did the poodle and it's dry enough where we can do something else. Do we want to do something like the Airedale? Do we want to do the pug? Probably Airedale would be since it's got a lot of hair and stuff. What do you guys think? Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's get the big set out. Where we're not having to mix as many colors because we've got it right here. So this set is a really, for, for $226, this is 70 colors, but it's portable, right? So how many tubes of paint would that be if you were trying to just buy tubes on their own separate? Okay, uh, let's see. Wow, that's such a huge set. That's really not fitting on there. Let's try this. I'm a little sad that we're doing this episode a month after my birthday. Why, why would that have? Because you were hoping that it would fall into your pocketbook. <laughs> no, because I didn't know I wanted it until now. Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see what you're saying. So retroact. Oh, there's a gold, Look, Amanda. I know my bag is big there's enough gold. to carry a kitchen sink. Yes, but yes it is. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and come in here and do... What is it raining? Katie, did you order this horrible weather? It didn't rain yet earlier. I guess. <laughs> Absolutely not, because I'm going behind the scenes going, ah! Curious Minds wants to know if you're going to bust out a water brush today. Uh, I can. I've got one. I just... Painstakingly filled. Yes. I just prefer not to use it because it's... I can't tell how much I, paint I've got in it. I mean, they're great for portability. I can't tell how much paint I've got in it like I can a regular brush because 
it's already got the water added in, you know? We get, we'll do the background with it. How about that? Well, you could spend two hours doing a multitude of bricks with it. Ha! Did you use a water brush for that? I told you I did. No, I would have. I would have. Natural variation on color. It's exactly what I wanted. I would have remembered that and been like, "You are crazy, crazy brave." Mm -hmm. Well, you use a water brush for lettering a lot, there, right, Amanda? Yeah, but I only use it for lettering. I used it for the bricks because I wanted it to give me a different color brick every time I painted. Well, but okay, so you use it a lot for the. For lettering, so you you're accustomed to how much to load it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's not like you were just like, so hey, right? I've never done bricks, and this is scary, so I'm gonna make it extra scary. Jada in YouTube just mentioned that you should add a collar so that you could do some of those other non dog fur colors, and I kind of agree with her. Well, the problem is show dogs have like a little collar you're not supposed to see you can't see the structure so that's why there was no collar on them they have like little my guys have a little I don't even know what it's like a climbing rope core that's like a 700 pound climbing rope core with kangaroo leather braided around it so it's like a tiny little thing all right so water brush which one did we fill all right I got almost tipped it in the water <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to give it a minute. How about some people volunteer background colors? We have everything. That teal. There's even a, a beautiful, oh, let's do teal and dioxazine. Teal. Yeah, let's yes. do, let's do, uh, let's see. We'll do the teal around the big guy. Let's do the dioxazine first around the little one. Ooh. Okay, so that's a nice water brush because the water actually comes out. You're not killing yourself trying to get it out. Now with him, I'm not going to put a shadow underneath so you can see kind of how it's a little confusing. Maybe the background will be enough where it doesn't seem weird. Okay, so I don't mind these water brushes. One of the things I did not like prior to this about water brushes, I tend to hold my brush very tight and water comes streaming out when I'm not ready for it. This does not do that, it's firmer. So that's a win for that, okay. Let's see, dioxazine is this, nope, that's a blue. So let's, and it cleans very easy too. Is that blue? Nope, that's blue as well. Oops, not in there, I bet this is the dioxazine. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice, nice rich color. Ooh, it gets dark really fast too. That's ultra pigmented. All right. And what did you guys say for the other one? Teal. For the one up top. Three to the right from what you're using currently. Yeah, I know which one. That's that's the. That actually is a color that I use a lot in acrylic because I love their cobalt teal. I had once had somebody who insisted a background be done for a painting of, it was a Great Dane and five of her puppies, but it was a portrait of her and then a portrait of her sitting giving high five. So there were seven dogs in this portrait that was like two feet by three feet, right? And she had to have the cobalt teal and it had to be the Lucas cobalt teal because she was going to paint her living room that and she didn't want to frame it. It was on a gallery stretcher. She wanted it to blend in. That painting was done in 2003. Do you know when she painted the cobalt? Two months ago? It is still the same sand color. <laughs> and every time I 
have been there, I'm just like, oh, because I, I, it was, it was literally three tubes of paint because they're to blend it and like shade it and everything because there was, it was such a big painting and it makes me sad because I like, that was a lot of cobalt that you didn't match it. But look how pretty that color is. Ah, get his ear. See, it's a very popular color, even with non-artists. Can you hit us with a reminder of where we can find every set that you use today? Okay, so yes, good, good point. So if you go to the jerrysartorama.com website, type in JL116 or JL116, whichever you prefer calling it, and that will pull up the entire grouping of the things that we've shown here today. All right, so let's go back to, all right, we got the background color, so I'm gonna let this go because this takes longer to play with than just doing this regular brush for me because I'm not used to it. All right, so let's find. Now, when you're working quick, always leave yourself just a smidgen of room between your background and your actual subject matter so that it doesn't bleed back and forth. It's one thing for it to be in this part that we're doing here because that's your, it's, it's almost dry and you're kind of making a nice kind of blend between the two. But the background is very wet right now and to this, I don't want this to get into it or it's going to go everywhere. So some of the areas I'm not touching quite yet. Oh, snap. See? I just did it. Which is why you don't do that. So we're going to see if we can't lift that out and get rid of it. other questions? How are we doing on time? Uh, Rachel's wondering with such a large set how can you be sure what paints will not clash with the other ones okay, in the so, sense of warms and colds? Okay so uh, there's a number of things you can do. We always I mean do color charts around here for everything all of us that, that do the show for our supplies I would encourage you to do a color chart just so you've got, just like we did with, oh, forgot to show mine. So while this is drying for a minute. Okay, so this is a set that I did with two watercolors. I've got hot colors in one, cool colors in another. See, I closed that before it was dry, but see how those are written out I've got the colors, I've got the number in kind of the edge there, and then I've got the number and the name of the color there. So I know what those look like, right? Then I've done it with all of them, with all of the sets. I've got the, the reds and yellows, I've got the blues and greens and violets, and then I've got the natural colors. So you do that first so you've got your little color chart, just kind of like we did for this little guy. Then play around with some of them together. Already look and see, are my blues cool? Are they warm? Look for pleasing color combinations. The beauty of this is these, there's so much pigment in this, you could mess with them for forever before you ever even start to paint, and it's not going to be a problem. You're going to have plenty more where that came from. Hey, on your color charts, what do the stars mean? What, on the this one? Maybe. I think it's light fastness, so I would know. Yes, it's light fastness. Okay. Because I took it off the tubes when I did them. I missed it. I, I when did them one it, so. at a time. It took forever. But so that so that I wouldn't have to go back because it's a it's a box set of stuff. I wouldn't have to go back and be like, oh, I don't know, I really like this color. What's the light fastness rating? Oh no. 
just because sadly with watercolors, that's something you gotta be more concerned with, with than with acrylics or oils. And I don't do watercolors often enough to remember, right? Okay, so we need to warm up some of the color in this Airedale because they're not really this. That kind of sandy color. They're siennas and some umbers and things like that. And this is the part that's good to know the colors uh, that are acceptable by the breed so that you're doing it right. An Airedale that looks sandy is not the proper color. Because you know what, if you enjoy doing dogs and stuff like that, there's a huge market for this out there with people that are fanciers. They will buy stuff like crazy off Etsy and off eBay and everything else, but that means that you've got to do your due diligence and have the correct representatives of the breed because I'm telling you, these people have, not me, but these other people apparently don't lack for money because they've got, you know, $200,000 RVs and they're going to shows every weekend and doing this and that and they will buy stuff that to decorate their walls that looks like their dogs. No questions asked hands down. So if you're interested in breaking into that market, you need to make sure you really carefully scrutinize the breeds. Terriers are put together very differently than uh, hound breeds, than, than working breeds, than you know, the non-sporting breeds. Every breed has its own weird little idiosyncrasies. Besides just the coat. My sister's best friend painted our beagle for my family as a Christmas present That's a couple years awesome. ago. And we love it. That's awesome. There, see how these little touches really warm that up a lot. And some of it's just following the lines of the, this is like the lazy way of doing watercolor. If you've got your lines on there for the shadows and things like that, you can just follow along to, you know, I don't like how dark this purple is because it's really making it hard to distinguish the back. So let's pull a little bit of that up. So it's not quite so dark. That moves pretty well. Even on this paper, being this paper pulp, lifted it a little bit. There, just darken that line so that should be. Any other questions? I feel like we're getting close to. Yeah, you got about no two left. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions, either about any of these Lucas colors that we're looking at or just kind of everything we've talked about today, about going and, and working. Don't, you know, if you like doing this, while well, I'm waiting for questions, if you like doing this and you want to get into it if, and you want to go sketch at shows, you can go to, um, let's see, infodog.com and search by state, the state that you're in and search for shows by state and it'll pull it up and you can look and see what shows are close in your area, go armed with business cards. If you've got them or even just make some, you know, on your computer or something like that. And because people will ask if they like your work, people will ask. And if you've got a business card there, you might get yourself some business. Just have them with you and don't feel weird. Some people are, most of the show people are really running around, you know, ready for their own ring or whatever, but you might get people that spectators that come and you know I'm painting an Airedale and they used to have an Airedale named Ralphie and Ralphie died and now they're sad and they're at the show reminding themselves of Ralphie and then suddenly they see your work and they're like 
Could you do a commission from photos of our Ralphie? Yes, yes you could. Here's a business card. So Jada would like to know how you would compare these pans to Windsor Newton pans. I find them find Lucas 1862 and uh, Windsor Newton virtually interchangeable. They, they both have, to me, the same uh, performance capabilities and the same color richness and everything else. The Lucas is just a, you know, a better value on your pocketbook. You can get a lot more colors for, you know, the money that you'd have to spend for the Windsor Newton. See how you can kind of see that? He's starting to fall away a little there. Let's go this color. All right, any other questions? Is it getting to be about that time? Mm -hmm. So next week, we are doing colored pencils. And the colored pencils, we're doing the tricky subject matter texture. And just, we've, we've done this with this. Let's continue on with... Fur is always a huge problem for people in colored pencil. So we're going to look at different types of fur. We'll do something that's coated. That's got a coat to it um, with like hair. And then we'll do something that's smoother where, because that's another thing is if you've got something that's a short haired animal, you've got, it picks up a lot more light reflections and things like that that are difficult to kind of figure out how to portray. So we will do the colored pencil tricky textures next week. So, and those, and those techniques for that can also be applied to other weird textures. It's just kind of seeing, learning how to see it and how to portray it color wise, so. All right, do we have any other questions? Are we all? Good to go as the brain lulled everyone to sleep. Yep. Yep, it's lulled them to sleep. <laughs> no, but it's definitely causing some issues, so. Oh, yeah, that's horrible. Sorry about that, guys. It seems like it's Thunderstorm Tuesday yeah. lately, doesn't it? All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully it's given you an idea, some ideas for working. Uh, showing you what a great value these are. You know, even this little, even just all these are our studies, right? These aren't finished works. This little set for $16 and some change is a fantastic way of, you got 12 colors to hit the road with. You can even pop a couple out if you've got a color you just can't live without and go from there. All right, well, I think that's, that's the end of the show today. Take care. <laughs>